actually want to use this kind of as an interactive um, uh, opportunity to, to learn from you so you can help me take back what um, I'm learning here during this whole entire weekend and hopefully we can come out with a new um, EDI2 program. I've got um, a program now, it's called the Economic Development Innovation Initiative, EDI2, which uh, really sprang from the last bar camp. Um, first off, my name is Mark Sharp. I'm a county commissioner. I was <clears throat> in the Navy for 20 years, active for eight, reserves for 12. <clears throat> and when I was at the Pentagon working as an, I was an intel officer, um, I realized that I wanted to make a big difference in the world and I wanted to help shape policy, really defense policy, but also American policy. I was fascinated with uh, public policy and I was going to leave Washington, come back, run for Congress, and change the world. Uh, like Evan Almighty, if you saw the movie, Evan Almighty's going to change the world. Only he won, I lost. I lost three times in a row. It was a great, great experience. It was kind of a startup experience for, for Joy and others who've questioned my uh, entrepreneurial background and experience. What I learned when I left the Navy and left the Pentagon and came to Tampa to run was I knew absolutely nothing about what I was getting into. Everyone told me, like with a startup, don't do it. Um, you have no experience, you don't have any money, and I didn't have any money, I had like $10,000 in a savings account, um, and no connections, and politics is all about connections. So I thought, well, this is perfect. I'm going to uh, come back with absolutely no chance of winning, and I'm going to show everybody how well I can do, and I'm going to win. So I came home, uh, met the guy that at the um, who was a, um, still has a company here, not gonna mention his name, but very active in the community, lots of money, and we're, maybe six months earlier, everyone was excited, or some in the political arena were excited that I was thinking about doing it. When I actually decided to do it, I realized they've got someone else as a Republican who's gonna run against this 30-year incumbent who's Congressman Sam Gibbons, and um, you know, this kid, who's at the time I was 32, can't possibly win, and so I got abandoned. And what I ended up doing was I got my co-patriots who are all students at the University of South Florida, I'd got my master's at USF to help me out. And we just went door to door. And what I, what I took was a deep dive into my world of politics. And I, real, I, 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 I focused on learning everything I could learn about people, about my community, um, about the market. I wanted to understand my market. I wanted to, need, I wanted to know what the demand was, what was the concern. This is 92 very different than, than this period of time now. And um, I didn't ask for any money, not a penny, because I knew that if I asked for money, I wasn't gonna get it. <laughs> so I was like, I, it, I, 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 I avoided the, the embarrassment and the shame of people saying we're not gonna give you anything. What I did was I set low goals, goals that I could perhaps meet. Um, to get on the ballot, I needed 10,000, um, roughly 10,000 signatures. Uh, of which about 5,600 had to be valid. So I assumed if I could get 10,000, at least half of them would be valid. They would, they would, they, these people were registered and that would get me on the ballot. By doing that, I would save $10,000, which is all I had in my savings to run. Um, I was gonna quit many, many times because knocking on doors and talking to people is painful. And I'm telling you this story because I really do feel like it kind of applies to what we're doing here and it applies to my life, which is getting involved in things I know nothing about, but that I care passionately about. So I know I need these signatures to get on the ballot, and I know I've got to go out every day and get a certain amount, and I calculated I need 33 signatures a day to make it. I started knocking on doors when I knew it was relatively safe to knock on a door, nine o'clock in the morning. Uh, this was during a time we had a lot of home invasions going on, literally, when I announce that I'm running for Congress, and when I say I'm gonna go out and knock on doors, is when they're saying on the radio, and this is when people listen to the radio, don't open your door if you don't know the person because they've had all these home invasions. So I'm like, oh my God, how am I gonna even now get the person in, to open the door and see that I'm legitimate? I'd wear a tie, I had a little sign, so what, do you, what, so what does someone think when you're wearing khaki pants, a white shirt, tie, and a little thing? You're, you know, you're a Mormon or whatever it is. You're out there to proselytize them, you know. So I was, well, I'm not pushing a religion. 
um, but this is who I am, this is what I'm doing, and I'd give them my entire spiel, and then after about 20 minutes, they would say, thank you very much, but I'm not registered, <laughs> or thank you very much, but I'm not interested. So I learned how to shorten my elevator pitch, and I that helped me a lot when I got to raising money, something that a lot of you have to deal with, which is how do you get money and capital? Because after I got the signatures, and I made it by 13, I qualified to get on the ballot by 13 signatures. Um, then it was, now I do need money. Now I've got to pick up a phone. Now I've got to ask people. And what I would do is what I'm very good at. I would do everything but what I needed to do. I would go in and I would talk to that person about the weather, their kids, football. I'm a Noel fan. You're a Gator fan. Wow, that game was great. You know, and yeah, I am running for Congress. And if there's any way you can help me, that'd be really nice. Thank you very much. I was done. I had not asked him for a specific amount. I basically had just danced around the subject, and then I thought, well, maybe they'll send me something. And you know what I found out? They're not sending me squat. They, you know, I would get nothing from them. So I then had to, I had to ask them, I need money. And at first it was hard, and then it became fun. And I actually, by the end of it, loved it. And I raised over a million dollars as a congressional candidate, um, which I was proud of at the time. I mean, you know, now, 92, I didn't raise a million, but I came close to winning. So I showed people I could do it. I realized, don't ask for something you're not going to get. Show them that you can do something. So what I had to show was I could get on the ballot, I did, that I could win my primary. I got 65% of the vote against the gentleman who was supposed to win and everybody thought was going to win and had all the money in the polls. <coughs> I had nothing. All I had was shoe leather. I knocked on doors. But I got on the ballot, and then I lost to Sam. And I tried again, and I lost, but by a point and a half. Tried again, I lost, and then like any good business person, you realize by your third time, <laughs> if you lose three times, quit or <laughs> do something different, which I did. And that was fun, but I realized I wanted a public policy. And that got me back into politics, but at the local level. And that got me into county government. And I almost didn't take it because, as I said before, when, when I told someone, I'm thinking about running for county commission, they said, well, if, God, why would you want to do that? But if you want to do it, go watch a county commission meeting. And then if you still want to run, let me know. And it was as a consultant. So I went, I turned on the TV set. I had my kid on my lap. I turned on the watch. I watched the board meeting. After 10 minutes, I said, oh, Lord, no, that's not for me. And I didn't. I didn't run. I held off. But finally, in 2004, ran, won. When I got in office, my goal was make a difference, change the world. I'm going back to what got me into politics in the first place. I want to make this community very different than the way it is. Um, it's a low wage, uh, relatively low wage community. We're a service economy. Our industry is built on homes and selling homes and building homes and flipping homes and financing homes and mortgaging and all that, but it's not really built on building things. Um, and so I want us to be a, a community where we've got the Googles and the, and the big companies, maybe a Boeing. You know, I, didn't, I don't know. I don't really care. I just want big name companies here in Tampa. And, and as we started looking at well, what art could our industry be, we realized the University of South Florida and all the things we've got here, Moffitt Cancer, healthcare could be that great, could be the field. Um, and so let's build this, we can become a healthcare, we'll, we'll compete with Boston and San Francisco and the great healthcare regions around the world. And you know, what I quickly, well not so quickly, I'm a politician, I'm kind of slow, it took me maybe four years, but I realized by the fourth year was, we're not gonna compete with Boston. We're not going to be Boston. We're gonna be us and we get some great things, but we can't beat these guys. <clears throat> we have to be more about who we are. But I also realized through some great people and some of them are in this room that Really, if we're going to make a difference, and as my term, I turned into my second term, turned into my third term, I'd been focusing on different issues. My issue was going to be how do we make our community smart and, and, and attractive to bright people. Um, we kind of looked at education, spent some time on educational issues. Then it became transit and transportation. We're going to bring rail here. I spent three years of my life, literally, focusing on building a, a, a coalition of individuals, a committee that studied the problem, then a solution, which was a referendum, trying to sell a referendum on transportation. And in my typical fashion, I timed it perfectly. I timed a tax vote, you know, a sales tax increase in 2010, right at the height of the Tea Party. You know, when everybody, you know, wanted to get rid of anybody who even suggested tax, and especially Republicans like myself, who would even suggest that government or, um, or anything that's government related could be good, we got to get rid of them. So in fact, what I attracted was a primary opponent and spent a, a good amount of time trying to survive that. I did, but 
we transition. And what we transition to is this. If we're going to make a difference, if this community is going to be really something special, we're going to be the community that is involved in making products. Not working for somebody else who's making cool products, but actually being the entrepreneur that builds the company, that designs it, that hires the people, that goes through the blood, sweat, and tears to make a successful company. And I became really, first personally, intellectually fascinated by this subject, but also realized, and I'm realizing this every day, and I was telling folks even this today, I know nothing about this. And then it's like drinking from a fire hose because there's just so much information. If I'm going to be telling you how to run for office, I can do it. Let me tell you, if you're thinking about running for office, sit down with me. I run congressional campaigns, local campaigns. I've talked to all the consultants. I've raised money. And so I know the, the nuts and bolts of a political campaign. What that tells me is there's got to be an application to business. If you're thinking about starting that business, <clears throat> who are you going to turn to? Who's going to be your mentor? Who's going to give you information? Somebody who's gone through it, who's done it, who's still doing it, or somebody who's read the books? Somebody who really wants to be, who's a consultant but really never has managed a campaign themselves, or just tr and they're just trying to raise money for themselves. And so the economic development world in which I was involved with as we began to talk about, okay, how are we going to attract these companies here? We went to the consultants. We went to the folks that really were not involved in the day-to-day -day grunt work. They were the ones that got paid to go out and find clients that they could take money from to feed them basically what a lot of political consultants will feed you, which is the stock answer. It's the, if you're thinking about running for office, I will give you a book this thick and you'll think, wow, that's a lot of information. If you read it carefully, what you'll realize is that book basically is the same book they use for every candidate anywhere in the country. They just take his name, scrub him out, put a little few references to your area, give it to you, and that's it. And it really doesn't help you at all. Or they'll do this. <clears throat> they'll tell you to read the book and then go out and do it. And you're like, well, can you help me? Can you show me? Can you get me to first base? And they're like, no, we don't do that. We give you the book. And so in economic development, what I have found is we kind of went through all this. We talked to all the consultants. They'd come in and take a lot of our money and give us big, 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 big picture. And then we'd sit there going, well, what do we do? How are we going to actually take what you've just given me and make Tampa Bay a place where startups can thrive, where the entrepreneur can succeed, where Tampa can compete with the Boulder, Colorados, the Austin, Texas, the Salt Lakes, the Raleigh, Durham's, all the regions which in Inc. Magazine, which I read religiously, they'll say top 20 places for tech startups, highest density of tech startups, these places. And as a politician, what I tell Joy and Ken is, I just want to be one of those places. What do we do to get there? And that's where EDI2 was born from. EDI2 was a result of coming to this meeting last year, listening to the tech community, saying, look, if you want to help us, first off, <coughs> don't. <laughs> Your government, back off. Let, let us help ourselves. But you can do some small things that you could, as a feeder to the, to the entrepreneurial community. You're not the leader, which is hard for a politician because we want to be the leader. We're used to doing things like the shovel. We take the dirt and we kind of you know, shovel it and we, so we're going to do a groundbreaking. We love to be there when the ribbon's cut you know, and we like to give the speech. But really trying to help you grow your business, build a business, we don't know anything about that. Um, you do have some politicians who are entrepreneurs, but for the most part, they're professional politicians. So what I'm trying to do now is to take this EDI2, this Economic Development Innovation Initiative, and take it to the next level so that Tampa Bay really can kind of kickstart this entrepreneurial revolution, which is happening all over the world and we hope will happen right here. And that's what I want to ask you about. What do we do? How do we make it successful? Um, how many of you are familiar with the EDI2 program? How many of you want money? <laughs> Good to see you. Is this the family you're talking about? Absolutely. I have already mentioned you at least three or four times okay. in presentations. <laughs> this is the, this is, I went to the uh, Brandon Chamber to talk to them, as I usually do, about something that I was figuring. I was going to talk about transportation, economic development, and I had a chance to talk with Brian, and Brian told me about his um, it's his uh, daughter. daughter and son-in-law. 
and that they're young, smart, going to create a business, and they want to go to Silicon Valley. They want to leave Tampa Bay. And our, my goal and our goal is to try to keep you here. We want you to, <laughs> what's that? <laughs> and, and you're going to get, and that's, and that's it, you got to, you got to, you, you got to, well, the, you know, the, the, the beauty is, and I, I felt the same way. When I, when I graduated from Florida State with a business degree, multinational business, I was going to go work for a company. I was going to look oil company. I was in, in, in the energy field. Um, I thought, my God, any place but Tampa. I've got to go. And I, will, and, and I did. And finally, I think after the third or fourth city of having moved and being in the Navy, I, got to, I, I, spent, I was trained in Denver, Colorado. I thought Denver would be the place. Got to Denver and realized, okay, it's okay. But, it, you know, Tampa's pretty good. And everywhere I went, I realized Tampa's pretty good. And that's where we are now. Tampa's darn good. We've got a lot of good things here. And our taxes are low. And we do want you to stay. But our concern is, you, is there an ecosystem here? I will use one of these startup terms, that we, the ecosystem. Do we have the ecosystem to support you? Do you feel like you have the ecosystem here? To, I'm going to put you on the spot, but do you feel like you have the ecosystem here to support what you're trying to do? Um, I would say that um, it'd be a lot, it would be a lot of effort and a lot of searching on top of trying to network. I feel like um, you, it's not um, as forward and is not as uh, connected. It feels a little um, convoluted here. Um, it's not that it's, I'm sure that the more involved we became in the community, uh, we would see that maybe there's more potential. Uh, it's just the things that, that are really big that we want to be part of and um, these people that our mentors that we really look up to um, are in another location. That's really what it comes down to. Do you feel like we have, the, my, my kind of sense is that the culture of California, and I spent time out there, is very different than the culture here. We're from here originally. Yeah. Go Nuggets. <laughs> Can anybody help them? Let, I mean, help them with this. Wait, we, Joy, you said, we talked about, you know, the, the, the challenges. See, this is, this is one thing I will say, though. Because um, I still remember when Chris Hart Jr., who's head of Workforce Florida, was sitting next to Michael Bloomberg. And we were talking about all the things we were going to do here to attract businesses away from New York or to compete with businesses and get them to come to Tampa. And Bloomberg turned to Chris Hart and said, you know, you think you can just cut your taxes and cut your taxes and attract the companies? He says, look at our taxes. We got some of the highest taxes in the country, but companies still come to New York. Why? He says, it's, and so companies are not going to just pick a place or a person is not going to be, is not going to shy away from a location just because their taxes are higher if they think they can still get ahead. And so I tell my Republican friends in the legislature, if you think you're just going to say we're going to cut taxes and make taxes low and that somehow that will magically draw the best and brightest, I, don't, I think we're fooling ourselves. Now, on the other hand, if we have an environment that's conducive to economic growth and development, and we can help the startup guy, and our taxes are low, and we've got a handle on a grip on our pension system, which in California they don't, and, and when you do start your business and it's successful, what I'm hearing from the entrepreneurs that are out west is, God, get us out of here, because the state's trying to take everything we've got. sort of a combination because it's a platform designed for both mental health professionals and for users as well seeking help. So that could benefit the both of them. It's really an area for all of them to come to okay. to gain a particular advantage. Um, so the, the primary reason you want to go to Silicon Valley, <laughs> yeah. okay. 
is because of the mentors that you have there? Yes, it's the sort. Of, it's really kind of the culture of it, and specifically certain mentors that we really believe in and have spent a lot of time following. And we have opportunities to be a part of it, and we want to take that opportunity. So that's basically what we're looking at. Okay. So I would say that you know you probably have a stronger case than most most people are that I hear say they want to do this because if you have mentors lined up, because everyone seems to make this assumption that they're going to move to California, it's going to be easier than this here. Right. Yeah. And um, you know I've done it in California, I've done it in Boston, and I've done it in Austin. It's not easier there. Have way more competition than you have here, and that would be something I would say to you. Even with the right mentors, you're going to have significantly more competition there for those mentors, for the dollars, for all those other things. So it is kind of is a calculation back and forth. But if you have the network, which is what I, I'm hearing, what you're really saying to me in the back end that you're kind of not saying, is you already have the network to plug you in out there, and you feel you would take, it would take you too long to develop the network here. Right. This is more that's that's fair. That's a very good point. Yes. Well, Brian, I mean, Brian, you're you're from, where? I'm from San Jose, California. You're from San Jose, and you left. And it, Brian's a Turner Exposition. Yeah, um, we produce the home and garden shows here in the Bay Area, um, and part of the reasons why we moved is because the area was becoming so expensive to to do business in, and I changed careers. But part of it was also lifestyle, transportation, a lot of different things were starting to really blow up in the Bay Area on, on a bad way and a good way. Um, so that was 20 years ago, and here we are. So uh, doing other businesses and doing other things. And, are you, and you're quite successful. Uh, I hope so. <laughs> well, I moved here. I mean, I was the one who raised your son here. So the, 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 one of the tough points out in the valley is that when you get to the point where you're ready to raise a family, So there is the, the real value proposition here is a quality of life metric right. kind of scenario. And the, the opportune time to capture people coming out of the valley is at the point where they're ready to, to raise, raise a family. So that would be the time to attract them. Um, another issue, um, I ran across a former corporate HR guy who's been surveys in the valley on why uh, people are going to work at Google or Facebook or whatever. And a lot of the respondents in the survey, it wasn't so much that it was the work for Google or Facebook, but I mean, I know for a fact that like one of the, the Gmail developers got a million dollar bonus, right? So part of it is to acquire a, a you know, enough capital themselves to then do their own startup, as it were, uh, which I thought was an interesting I think to that point, I mean, there certainly are some, some equity checks in startups when it comes up to start to build. You know, for every Google or Facebook, there's 10 million others that are never going to be Google or Facebook. Right. Um, I would argue, and I can tell you based on the students I've talked to here, and I've talked to students at every university in the area, um, on a pretty regular basis, I think I've spoke at four entrepreneurs. They're a junior and they have no idea that there's cool companies to go work for or cool projects to work on. Then how would you expect? To okay, well let's let's, go, let's stop at the, the, the cool point because I think that's a very important thing. And this is, in some ways, politicians in particular, we can be incredibly superficial, and 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 glib, and and not want to dig and drill down deep. Um, but I think it's important that we do because I look at this state. I've always thought this is look at this guy right here. He's tan. He's sharp. He comes in. 
you know, he's strong. To me, that's the vision of the, that's the image of the state. I, I always thought that the state should, the, the picture of our state should not be, and I'm not being in any way critical or dismissive, but an old guy with black socks up to his knees playing golf, you know, with his buddies, you know, and, and what's that? But, but I mean, I'm just talking, if you talk to young people, now if you, if you talk to young people about Florida, from anywhere else in the country, because I got relatives, my wife's family's from Nebraska, this is what they think. I go to Disney World every weekend. We live at Disney World, um, you know, and they think we spend all our time at the beach. I'm out in the sun a lot, you know, I run, but I, I, don't, I don't go to the beach much. We live at the beach, we go to Disney World, or it's that retirement state. And I think our state kind of branded itself as the place where you come and you retire and you just wait until whatever happens after retirement, you know, a nursing home or whatever. I mean, you, we, that we, and I thought, wait a minute, we, we don't do a good enough job of marketing what ought to be, what our state, I mean, let's think about outdoors. It's sunny, we ought to be biking and running and, ex, and, and, and giving that visual of an energetic state. And that, Kite boarding, but I mean, but that a, that an energetic state, because it seems to me that the people that are in tech or in startups, while a lot of you guys like all of everybody, I mean, you guys eat donuts a lot. Everyone likes donuts because that's what you got here, donuts. Okay, you eat lots of pizza, you eat lots of donuts, ramen noodles, whatever. You eat, you eat all this, but, but, and you sit in front of a computer for 20 hours out of 24 hours, so you don't get a lot of exercise maybe at first. But then everybody, when they make a little bit of money, wants to go out and exercise and run. They're very outdoorsy. It's a very... It's a very energetic group of people. And so there's, a, there's an image of other places. California does kind of get that. Maybe it's because of Hollywood. Gets that image, you know, maybe because of, you know, former Governor Schwarzenegger, you know, because it's kind of an outdoorsy. And we kind of went for, we're going to go for that retirement community. We're going to build Sun City. And we're going to build other communities that cater to the retirement community and not cater to you guys who are going to be my test models for whether or not we're going to be successful. I mean, I th honestly, after you told me about them, I'm thinking, this is what we'll determine. Our success or failure is going to be based upon whether they stay or go. I want them to stay. I want them to be here. I want them to build your company here because it's going to force the support environment to kind of come up and say, hey, we're here. We'll help you. And we help you. We can help other people. People say, you being helped. Hey, I can make it here. This can be, and, I'm, and as I'm thinking about, as a government guy, I always want my government programs to grow. So I got EDI 2, I want EDI 3. Or I guess that would be next. Would it be EDI 3? Economic Development Innovation Initiative. What's that? Yeah, you can do whatever you want. I can make whatever I want, as long as there's money. One, one of the things I heard them say was convoluted, Mark, and, and that's actually a really encouraging word. That's the Tampa's com, yeah. The, 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 the pathway to what they're trying to achieve would be more convoluted here, right? And that's an encouraging word to hear, right? Ten years ago, the path was there is no path. I'm getting the hell out of here. I agree with you so the fact that you're even contemplating it is encouraging. I've heard that referred to, that phenomenon referred to in other things. We've had more programs now, Mark, which is the fantastic part. You guys are doing a good job at the political level, at the grassroots level. Things are happening at, at USF. What oftentimes I hear people complaining about, though, is that there's not a lot of clear understanding of the connectedness of those groups. So I think we have the components of an ecosystem. We need a map. No, I'm not <laughs> sure. I'm not. <laughs> no, you're, you're, that's exactly what we, we need. We need a map. Yes, I love maps. I'm, a, I'm an Intel guy. I'm an Intel guy. Even if our map's screwed up, I like maps. So how, 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 does how does 620? How does 620? done by the people. Yes. Okay, yes. Done well, what about, okay, have any of you gone to connect.org, connect.org? Yeah, absolutely. Go to connect.org. If you haven't gone to connect.org, and, and in fact, I even thought about creating it. I thought, I want to be the guy that con created connect.org. Then he passed away, so I don't want to be that guy. But he's, he's a, but, but he's, no, he's a sharp, he's, no, but he had this idea. He's San Diego, and I'm being disrespectful. Come on. It's Saturday. We can have fun. Uh, we're not watching football. Uh, um, but I really was impressed with what this guy did with connect.org. And then last, two nights ago, when I was at this presentation of, you know, um, guys, it's a, you know, a big room with people with lots of money, they're all investors. Um, they, um, the one gentleman walked up to me, bless him, a savage, and said, what you need is a connect.org. You don't, you got lots of stuff. I think we've made tremendous improvements 
since I was elected in 2004, the tech community is saying, is saying, daggone it, we're here. But maybe we need that, maybe we need that. Correct. Have you seen Made in New York? What's that? The, the, oh, made the startup community and software developer, programmer community in New York City, there's a website and it's called Made in yeah. New York. Yeah. And basically, it's a, you know, it's a Google map and the place markers in all the yep. startups and all the software companies that are in New York City have put their data into the database and mapped everybody out. And you can go to that website and you can, you, you get a feel for what the community is, how many employees they have, who's hiring, where they're distributed in the city. You can read about it in Tech in the City. If you look up Tech in the City, which is a web-based book, great book, it talks about that. And, and there's, there's actually, there's actually, if this one you're talking about, sorry, talking about, there's that one, but there's actually half a dozen of those yeah. sites. There's I mean, actually there's one that's more explorative. Well, you know, so I actually, my business won the business plan competition in this room. Cool. And I'm still doing it today. But I find the problem is finding talent in this well, area. Yeah. Like developers. Um, yeah. You know, I feel that this community, we might have all these pieces, but we don't have a way to connect those. Well, USF here, the number of engineers that we crank out is very small compared to a Boston or a California. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that hurts recruiting for the area. It's very difficult to find developers or testers or whatever in this area. And you just can't make those connections. So they mentioned, or actually you mentioned the networking. That's one of the biggest weaknesses I see in this area is the ability to network and know who's where. Well, well I, don't so give, I don't want to give too much price, but there, there actually are a lot of meetups and things like that for people to have access. You go to meetup.com, I can tell you right now that you will find at least two deep breakfasts, a geek lunch, where you can find the developers that you're talking about that are available. I don't run any of those. But they're available. But it seems to me, though, th not the, but it seems that there is a need. There is a need, but hang on. So I would argue that people find me every week. I get probably four or five emails. I was in a session this morning. We were talking about stuff like that. So if you think like LinkedIn, and you look for, you know, start CEO, you look for angel capital, you look for this, right, and you put those terms in, um, my name will pop up on the first page. Well, I've been recruiting here not that hard to find. I've been recruiting here for two years. It's very difficult. Or go to hire people remote because of that, and because there are so few product companies here, uh -huh. the numbers of people with the skill sets are very low in trying to find. I think if you were trying to, I, I agree with you to a point, but I think that there's a lot of people who have been right through here who have a skill they're looking for. They choose not to be employees of companies; um, they choose to do the other work. I know, but you've been here saying how easy it is. I can tell you, I've been here two years right. working on that, working with the person. So you have what kind of business do you have? We got a great program. Uh, Middleton High School has got a great magnet program where they're teaching kids to code. And there's a lot. There's a, there's been some suggestions about. In fact, I'm working with Mosey, who's partnering with um, the state to create a STEM program. And the challenge is, it's going to be a. They're going to. They're looking at actually building a magnet program within Mosey proper that will be used to try to address it, but it's so small. So I met with Mary Ellen Elia. We sat down with her staff and we said, this is a great idea. How can we, and, and my, and this is, I mean, the one thing I will do if I like an idea is try to make it bigger. And we're like, okay, how do we get it in every school? The challenge is try being, my wife's a teacher, try being one. The state legislature with all the requirements and all that they give you to do, there's very little window for anything really, oftentimes Sally, that's relevant. Because they've got they, they've got the they've got the mechanism that they've established for really the old school, 
And the schools of today are, are training as much as they're trying. They're still training people for old industries. We're not thinking about what's coming at us. And, there's, and it's coming at us like a freight train, but we're not preparing kids for this. At that level, that's a good thing. But what are you going to do to keep those kids in the area when there are so few engineering programs in the area? USS, as large as it is, puts out far too few engineers, and one school cannot support an area of this size. Well, that's a very good point. The value, the value of a university degree is it's really problem solving and, and developing. Right. Yeah. Hold on, hold on. Let's let this gentleman. He, he had his hand up. I want to give him a chance. How much, uh, you know, a lot of times, like in a strip mall, you have an anchor store, and the government can be an anchor in some respects. So, how much does, I'm from Reynolds County, but Hillsborough County, uh, how much money is spent on, for example, I've looked at the products that this, the city uses. St. Pete for, let's say, recording audio of sessions, and then sometimes you get public records requests for my political project, and not a, they're not using any open source software. Why don't you hire people from your own county to write the software, open source it, and use it internally yourself, and get other cities to partner with you on it? Then those people have to stay because they're going to be working for the county to some extent. You don't have to do the heavy lifting. A lot, a lot of those apps, again, if you go to open there's a complete inventory of apps targeted, targeted at civic engagement. But you do have to provide the skilled people to implement the software. Right? So and improve it. And right. And it's, 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 look, it's Wikipedia is starting to say even lower than that. And left. I mean, yeah. Mar Marta in Atlanta, there's a product called, it was called Nextbus until Cuba Corporation stole the trademark. But the University of Washington developed a algorithmic process to determine the arrival time of buses, right? They did it for their bus system. It went into Portland. It went into the Washington system. New York Transit adopted it. MARTA just let a contract, they hired a defense contractor to implement it, but MARTA is implementing that same code set, right? These open plan guys, they wanted to do a taxi, ta taxi cab availability app, right? Well, they couldn't get it funded in the U.S., so they got money from the World Bank, and they Built a, they built a code for the Philippines, and now they're taking the code base and bringing it back into the United States. And the driver for it is because of this freaking hurricane. Right. You can take out the gas supplies, there's no transit for cabs, right? So, but the issue is, you got Code for America willing to do partnerships. If a, if a municipality will pony up 60 grand, they'll match it, and they'll put a team in a market for, you know, like a two-man team for a man year, to help code apps and build that into the culture. The open plans people are building the apps and making them available on GitHub. So if you have a qualified group of people that can handle downloading it, installing it, and deploying it, you can get all kinds of civic engagement apps targeted at improving the quality of life for transportation and medicine. But again, it, you know, the problem is you've got to have a virtuous person in government who's willing to stick their neck out. I mean, two years ago, IBM was giving away $100 million in matching labor expense to city. Well, I mean, part of the, part of the challenge, I mean, look, government, having spent most of my life in government, hierarchical, the, the hierarchy of government, the way we silo things, the way we, you know, as opposed to what you deal with, which is the networks, very, very different. And so even a great idea oftentimes get beat, gets beaten down by the system itself. And, and, I, and when we had our hackathon and I was like, we're going to open up all our data and we're going we're to give it all up to the people and we're going to have all these guys come in and all of our staff's going to get up and say, here are, here are the 20 problems we have, solve it. I was naive enough to think we could do it. And then, I, and then each one who said, that's a great idea, slowly, quietly through the bureaucracy, push back and, then, and, and, and say, well, we really can't do that and we can't give this information out and we really don't want the people looking at this one. And pretty soon we ended up basically where we were. We had a pretty decent hackathon. We're going to try to have another one that's more successful. But our goal is to... It was good. No, no, no. It was good. Exactly. And we're going to keep it up. I, I would say, too, on the developer thing, just really quick, is people who want to learn different development techniques and you're looking for algorithm and things like that, if you haven't looked online, anyone, I take no, you can take courses from MIT professors, you can take courses from professors at Stanford, you can take courses, Berkeley. and it is absolutely free, and it's the identical curriculum that you will get if you actually go and attend that university. So you go online, you register, you're online with the courses, and it's identical, you do all the same work, you don't do the work, you get kicked out, just like if you were in school. 
One, one, one thing, because I, I, I know, and we're going to give you, and we're going to get everyone to have a chance. And I want you, first off, though, my Twitter is Mark Sharp FL. Mark Sharp FL. If you'll t I tweet a lot, um, and I'd love to hear from you, and I'd love to get some feedback. Um, you can also, uh, my, my email is um, msharp1776 at gmail.com, so I'm easy to find. So if you've got a suggestion and you want to feed it to me, please do it, because I'll take it to our county administrator and such. Our goal and objective truly is to make Hillsborough County a place that people want to be, and it's cool, and you can grow your company. Uh, part of the challenge is, for us, I mean, quite frankly, here's the deal. Some communities, they've hit rock bottom. Look at, De I'm, I'm impressed by Detroit. Detroit is one of those places where you'd think nobody wants to be, yet now, it is like cool. Everybody, oh, you're from Detroit. My wife went to Detroit for a couple weeks to train some teachers not too long ago, and she said there's an attitude, there's an edge in Detroit. And so now Atlantic City loves to write about Detroit. And all, these, all the different tech uh, blogs that I go to, and I go to a bunch of them, Detroit's like their baby. They've so now everybody's running to Detroit. And, and I'm kind of thinking, okay, well, we're the torpid apocalypse. Tampa Bay was written about when they wrote Tampa Bay, George uh, Packer in his book, uh, The Great Unwinding. Uh, Tampa was described as the torpid apocalypse. Uh, before that, there was a piece that talked about how we were a hot mess. That was in Salon magazine. So I'm thinking, okay, we haven't quite hit the bottom, but I mean, you know, that we're getting hammered, so maybe guys will think, well, this is a cool place to be, because there's something weird about Americans. When we get hit in the face, most of us, we like to fight back. That's one thing. We're all fighters. We like to fight back, but it's almost like you've got to get kicked and kicked and hit and hit, and then people go, you know what? I want to be there. And so what I'm hoping we do is we get a little edge to us because I think what we've been is we've been comfortable. There's been all these cool things going on in great cities. Other cities are like Pittsburgh and Cleveland, and those guys are crashing because their economy's toast, and they're having to find themselves and redefine themselves. Tampa's always been kind of able to go along. We're going to be the banking community until everybody runs off to Charlotte. Oh, we're going to, well, we'll do call centers. Maybe we'll be finance. We're back, we're, we're back office. We provide jobs, but our per capita GDP is at $26,000. Well, you got Denver and Seattle at fifty-five and sixty-five thousand dollars, so we know there's a problem. But you know, we're still creating jobs. Richard Florida just put a piece out last night that I was reading, which talks about the job creation in Hillsborough County. We're creating a lot of jobs, but most of them are low wage. We're still creating a lot of low wage jobs. My challenge is that I want to create a revolution right here. I want to see it happen. But the economic development arms that we've got, they're trying. Some of them are holding on to the old. They still don't get what's going on. They, they, they are, they'll buddy up with the big time companies that are doing quite well. They really don't understand this. They're afraid of this. So what they do is they get one organization or entity which they think speaks to this, and they say, well, we got them on our board, or they're on one of our committees, and so we, you know, we're part of startup. But I sense that they don't have any clue what's happening. And the one thing that I do believe when I listen to the president of Stanford University speak, or I hear some of the, the tech, I mean, when I listen to the guys that I consider the wise sages of the tech community, when they say we are just at the very tip of this tech revolution which is going to explode and change everything that we know. And so when I, when, I, when I know that's happening, my sense is, man, the freight train's heading right towards us, and it is big. So we can either jump out of the way and watch it pass, and get left behind and be lost in dust, or what I'm trying to do, grab a hold. I mean, this is one I want to hold on to. I want to be part of this. And I, and I think that w as government, even though we're going to get it wrong, more often than we get it right, we're going to get it wrong. You just can't get frustrated. I mean, you, you can help us, but you just know we're government. We're going to screw it up. But we're going to try our best to do it right. And I think if you all can, can do what Brad said, Brad felt, lead the revolution, step up and say, we're not going to wait until government tells us or our elected officials tells us where we're going, where the economic development organizations, which are supposed to be marketing for our eight counties, tells it. Because if you're waiting for that, God, you're going to wait until, you're going to wait for a long time. They are not going to get us there. So what you've got to do is get up and lead it and push it and create it. And then, I, and then what we're going to do is try to join you. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to, our job will be to feed you, to help it out, to be there, to support you. And then Tampa Bay can be that cool place that right now, for some, we're not.
and I'm not putting a lot of pressure. I keep looking over at you guys, but we do want you all, we want you to stay, and because I see that you reflect what it is we're trying to, to keep here. And, and I will say this, this talent and this connection thing, I think there's, I believe there's a need for a connect.org, just like what you've got in um, San Diego. And maybe I, as part of EDI3, will try to create that. I'm already thinking where I go next. I know Joy's going to be, she's, but I think we need something like that. And so we're going to look at maybe creating it. And uh, does anybody have any final points? I, d I know, did you, have, did, yes, sir? I just want to say, what, what do you say? You could be the big dog here. Exactly right. Here's exactly. That's the whole point. Exactly. But you need to make it easy. We need to make it easier to make those connections. That's the hard part True. here. True. But we're I going think there out. are a lot of things. Tyler talk. Well, no, I, 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 was, I was a developer here for, God, I don't know, in Florida. I, mean, I grew up developing in Florida. And there are a ton of developers. It's one, there is a disconnect in communication. It's hard sometimes to find the right people. But programs like this are exactly what we need. Um, these, are, these are great great issues and great places to be. And in all honesty, a lot of business campus don't pay enough. I mean, frankly, like when I came out of school, they were like, oh, we'll give you 42,000 a year. And I was like, that's awesome. I mean, I still try, I still try to get recruited by companies here all the time. And I'm, the, the, the salaries are literally 70,000 lower than anywhere else. And I thought some services All right. Hey, let Peter, do you have a question? Or? Yeah, one last thing. You know, it's early. Yes. Yes. Not that much. Before you leave, call one of them. Because we're going to chat with your ass tonight. But thank you. Twitter me or email me. Thank you very much. God bless you all. Great. Yay. Thank you. 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 Th